so yeah, we're, we're going to talk about Mark Kern, who has really been just holding on tight to that last tiny shred of relevance uh, from this already fading series of controversies. Like, for as much pomp and circumstance as this Griftosphere wanted to give, quote-unquote, Gamergate 2, it has already seemingly faded into the ether. Like, I, I don't... I, I'm, aside from the people who are terminally online and have stock invested, I don't see anybody really even caring about it. Like, it seems like most people are ignoring them. But Mark Kern has taken this controversy on as a way to try to somehow uh, claw his way back into the industry, or at the very least, some kind of relevance. And he, he fancies himself, as we'll see from going through his tweets, fancies himself something of a, uh, a rebel leader in the game industry, trying to, to reform something or save video games. I'm, I'm not really sure. It's kind of sad and ridiculous when you really look at him. So we're going to see that in just a second. I, I, I feel it's important to know his background before we really get into um, what he's trying to do now. Because he spent about a decade just being kind of irrelevant. And that is pretty important to understanding why he seems to be pushing so hard lately for this new Gamergate 2 thing. Uh, which has, as you might predict, resulted in completely random and unassociated people being targeted for harassment, which we will see in a second. <clears throat> Anonymous employee, former employees of the Firefall studio allegedly came forward to spill the beans about mass layoffs, questionable decisions, and ex-CEO Mark Kern's erratic behavior. One person said that Kern's constantly shifting decisions caused severe stress on the team. Quote, months of work would be thrown out simply because he would change his mind or he would have another revolutionary idea. This is something, for those who aren't adept in game industry um, or who don't know about game development, this is something that has doomed many a project in the past. Um, this is basically what happened to, uh, oh god, I, I lost that tweet, fuck. I had my best tweet on my last account I just remembered was owning George Broussard, the, uh, one of the developers of Duke Nukem Forever. Um, I forgot what I said, but it was, oh god, I roasted him. Um, he blocked me after that, but, well, anyway, um. No, so this is something that affected George Broussard with Duke Nukem Forever, which started, for those who don't know, started development in the late 90s. It did not start the development like a usual time for a game that came out in 2011, maybe around 2007, maybe 2008. Um, but it kept being rebooted, rebuilt from the ground up because they kept having new ideas. They kept wanting to push the engine. That's bad for game development. Like you want to set out a plan and execute on it and execute on it well. Uh, so it's not surprising that he becomes an ex-CEO after being kind of bad at management. Another anonymous ex-staffer said that Kern was worse than that. Quote, when he did get involved in the production of the game itself, he was simply destructive. He would swoop in one afternoon and berate a series of features several teams had spent months on, declaring they begin again and listen to what he told them to do. He'd be back in a few days to see if it was done. This crushed morale and forced people into spontaneous, isolated crunch mode. He would shout and scream his perspectives. Terrible management. Like, that is dog shit game management. As somebody who's worked on several dev teams, um, yeah, that's fucking terrible for morale. Like that is no, nobody even working in one department wants to hear that. Oh, did you hear what happened with the art team? Did you hear what happened with this texture designer? Did you hear what happened with this sound designer? Like they got chewed out like that. Every time I've interviewed people for one of the documentaries that I've made, which again, if you haven't checked it out, I've uh, made documentaries on the development of Fear 3, Silent Hill, Homecoming, um, Condemned 2, X-Men Origins Wolverine and Paradise Killer. They're all on the channel. They are full featured. Most of them are featured like documentaries um, that featured developer interviews. I went and interviewed the developers and I found assets from those games that have never seen, been seen before. It's all on the channel. Go check them out. But the thing in those interviews that united a lot of them was how much of the development process was made easier or harder by good checkpointing, good team management, good goals, 
actually able to work towards those goals, not having to reboot things and reset things and redo work and throw stuff away, which is exactly what we're seeing here. This is the opposite of that. The Rise and Fall, this is from December 2013. The Rise and Fall of Mark Kern, How One Man May Have Doomed Firefall and THE9. And I've, I read this before when we were talking about um, Gamergate 2. Chinese game developer and publisher The9 has been betting big over the past few years on Firefall, an MMO FPS being developed by the US-based and The9 owned Studio Red 5. They're shooting for global success and even sponsored one of China's top soccer teams to get the Firefall logo on the shirts of top footballers. Excuse me. Between Firefall and Kiji 2, a game The9 is counting on to succeed in the domestic market, The9 has spent more than 100 million just on promotions over the past three years. That's big fucking money. For, for just promotional, that's big. But 2013 winds to a close, and it's clear that Firefall hasn't yet attained the level of popularity that they're hoping for. And when they removed Red 5 CEO Mark Kern from his position shortly before Christmas, it raised questions about the future of the project and about Kern's leadership and the degree to which he is responsible for some of Firefall's failings. Here, here's the part that people really like to, to hold uh, over Kern and, and treat him like some industry luminary. He's not, really. He worked as a producer on a bunch of stuff. And as associate producer, which is not, like, there are multiple producers in that role. Kern came to Red 5 Studios with an incredible pedigree, having worked on a number of Blizzard's most popular titles, including StarCraft, Brood Wars, uh, World of Warcraft, and he also worked on... Dog, seriously? He also worked on Diablo 2 at some point. Dog, go, leave. Yeah. Crow V. For reference, Horizon, uh, Horizon Forbidden West was made with $212 million. They spent half the budget of Horizon Forbidden West on marketing. And Kerm came through for Red 5 right in the nick of time, with money in hand. At a time when the studio was near bankruptcy, he was a man with the right credentials, the right history, and money from the right investors to, that could help keep the company, and by extension, Firefall, afloat. There was a time when it would have seemed insane to suggest that if there was something wrong with Red 5, Kern, one of the company's co-founders, was it. However, after his dismissal the weekend before Christmas, Kern released a somewhat cryptic statement in which he called his time at Red 5 my own Kobayashi Maru, a reference to the fictional Star Trek training exercise that is designed to be impossible in order to test candidates' response to a no-win situation. Right, remember, he was, like, largely unrealistic with his expectations and abusive to his staff. So he, he's already trying to portray himself as a hero here. The implication seemed to be that Kern's failure was inevitable, presumably because he was tasked with developing a game that couldn't be successful. Uh, couldn't find the post. In his post, Brutal Whimsy alleges that Kern vastly overspent on ill-advised promotional stunts that failed to pan out. And here's where we get to the Firefall bus. Oh, buddy, the Firefall bus. I need to show it off first. I'm sure they'll show it in the thing. Here is the Firefall bus. Like, just an... Just... Uh, apparently it wasn't actually drivable i saw somebody say um i mean it looks it looks hideous on the outside i i get how it's cool on the inside but like it's so just garish and awful like it's so gross Current, for example, established a separate video production team, outfitting it with red brand production gear among the best and most expensive in the industry, an ever-expanding staff, and a separate soundstage. This team was used to make live-action Firefall videos, but it also worked on vaguely related and quote-unquote stillborn, as Brutal Whimsy put, series Game Changers, and on several completely unrelated projects. Brutal Whimsy also cited another kern driven uh, promotional project that went horribly awry. The creation of a Firefall-themed bus that was meant to serve as a mobile promotional tool and a mobile server from which to host competitions via LAN while the game was still in beta. The bus was also meant to expand via hydraulics to increase its size, and Brutal Whimsy suggests that the project cost around $3 million. The project contract was given to West Coast Customs, a vehicle shop that tricked out cars from the MTV show Pimp My Ride, but West Coast Customs apparently botched things, going over budget and delivering the van both late and missing some of its key features. It missed premieres at all the major conferences and now, quote, sits in a warehouse somewhere collecting dust. So the thing that they bought to be a promotional vehicle to have at press conferences, to have at like E3 and Gamescom and shit, 
which I don't even know how the fuck they would get it to like TGS or Gamescom. Like how, how are you going to ship that to fucking Tokyo? While in this case, the failure was partially West Coast Customs, Brutal Whimsy points out that a $3 million promotional bus created by the world's highest profile car customizers probably shouldn't have been a priority for a game that was, at the time the bus project began, still in pre-alpha. Uh, declaring again that they listened to him on what to do. He'd be back in a few days to see if it was done. This crushed morale, we read through that. He would shout and scream at perspectives. He would ignore anything that didn't fit his immediate viewpoint, which was subject to sudden violent changes. He would rage email people in the small hours of the night or on weekends. He would spout bile and vitriol to the point where he gave some employees, mostly his production crews, access to a safe word. This was in case he began particularly ver being verbally abusive. Someone could yell it out or email it to him and he would clam up. He had the misguided notion that he could write quality fiction and would force feed it to members of the writing team. He's fired people on the spot, berating and screaming at them publicly. He's thrown temper tantrums and objects around the office. One review for the company reads, the CEO goes through spurts and there can be, uh, excuse me, the CEO goes through spurts and can be there for a few weeks at a time then suddenly disappears. He tries to compensate by having open company meetings for anyone who would like to attend, but if he does not postpone or cancel, it is nothing but hearing his ideas and what books he has read. Another reviewer writes, employees are not are fired for not for messing up, but for offending the CEO. In fact, as long as you're in good standing with the CEO, your job will be protected. Still another confirmed both of those claims, calling working for Red 5 a nightmare. Most of the upper, quote, uh, most of the upper management, including and especially the CEO, are often AWOL for lengthy periods of time, only to show up one day and announce a new strategy for the project. Despite all the talk of an open culture, if you disagree with upper management or run afoul of the CEO, you can expect a short walk to the door. So, Let's go and see now, because that was 2013. And while he's puttered between various projects, like he, I believe he tried to uh, crowdfund another kind of MMO game, he hasn't done much since then. But if you've been on Twitter in the last couple days, especially with how Twitter loves to promote uh, the, the far-right griftosphere, which he is very closely coming into alignment with, You've probably seen some of his posts go around. Uh, the, the thing you must understand about Mark Kern is that he is deeply, deeply cringe. He is a man who, at this point, is in his 50s. And there, there are a couple things, a couple parts of this. Because while he has been harassing community managers, he has also jumped onto the Stellar Blade train and he's been harassing journalists. And all of these, the way that he goes about these things paints a picture of somebody who's deeply creepy. And I hope I hope I make that clear through just analyzing some of his own posts. Because he is somebody who does not understand proper boundaries. Uh and well we'll we'll see. I don't, I don't wanna I don't wanna spoil it. We could talk about the hell divers thing. I wanna go back a little bit more though. Oh, did he respond to me? Ho oh, ho! I've been spreading light. Oh, this is this is fresh beef. This meat is fresh. Oh my goodness! I've been spreading lies about him for weeks. <laughs> oh, okay, buddy. I would I would love to know. Um, what lies I've spread, but we'll we'll get to that in a second. There's there's no need to rush. I like to take my time. Now, of course, he's on the sweet baby tip. I want to go back to let's talk about uh, another thing he's been really big on is the fact that there's apparently revisionist history around Bayonetta and near. Oh, hello, dog. Oh, yeah, here it is. Exactly what I was talking about. Gaming journals love to lie and revise history. They pan near Automa. They panned near Automata for sexism until gamers propelled it to the top of the charts. Then they changed their tune to hop on the bandwagon. Game journalists panned near Automata. 88%. Let me move my head so you can see. Oh, you still can't see. Never mind. You can go look it up. It's on. It's on Metacritic. It's at eighty-eight percent. 
generally favorable based on 107 critic reviews. As, as somebody who's working as a game journalist when Nier Automata came out, I loved it. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? They will do the same with Stellar Blade. Like, he's just making shit up. Forgot to talk about the, um, save the date he did on April 1st, because he has been, uh, sending a lot of hate towards Alyssa Mercante. And so he, he thought it would be funny on April 1st to say, oh, we're getting married. Which, like, I, I get the, I get the joke. I don't think it's funny. Um, I think it is creepy. I think it's weird. Like, that's, that's, like, a little bit, like, admitting to the old, like, playground analogy about, like, oh, if a boy likes a girl, he's gonna hit her. Like, it, it feels a little bit like that. Um, and then when Alyssa said, please report this, this is weird, his response was, she's just a little nervous, it'll pass, which is, uh, that's sure a fucking response to choose. That is sure a response you can choose. If you look at AAA gaming, beautiful women are the most marginalized and under unrepresented segment of the market. You say having to pull out games from almost a decade ago and random NPCs and children to prove your point. Uh, this is this is Billy from Wolfenstein 2. What are you talking about? Beautiful women. God, Mark, dude. All right, let me see. Yeah, with one image being a child, it's like, you could have not. Um, yeah, his one of his big things, though, as I was talking about earlier, has been the, the revisionist history around Bayonetta, which just doesn't exist. I, I showed it on Twitter the other day, but, like, when Bayonetta came out, it had people praising her. People, like, the IGN review, which gave it, like, an 8 or a 9, praised her sexiness as a strong female character. The, this this narrative of game journalists were doing this. No, one person was maybe doing it. Uh, what's her face? I can't even remember her name right now. Anita Sarkeesian made a video about it. But you know what? A lot of people, game developers, journalists, players, YouTubers, disagreed with her. Just in like a healthy and normal way. And didn't feel comfortable speaking up at the time because she was getting death threats over it. And as you, as you can see here, he's been boosting a lot of people uh, that he's been interacting with more and more. Uh, Nerdrotic. Uh, I think Gothics was in here somewhere. The Park Place. Panned near Automata. Like, I can't even, I can't even believe Panned near Automata is something, like... It's not even that, it's, it's not that old. Like, it's... Uh, <sighs> Uh, mass report me cancel pig is spreading false it, it's very interesting how he wants to call other people cancel pigs but much of his thread from here on up is going to be him targeting random people we're, we're about to see yeah community manager um he's so he started getting mad at community managers over compulsion games south of midnight which they have removed the people from their website because they keep getting harassed um he has these unsubstantiated here's this is a, a causality, a side effect. I'll call it a side effect. This is a side effect of um, the libs of TikTok idea that, oh, you can just be a journalist if you just like spread shit. <laughs> Regardless of if it's true or corroborated or not, because he just like says things that people have contacted him with. And doesn't really give like proof. He doesn't have any journalistic scruples. Um, and then you'll see here, the gamer hating community manager, Pikachu Lita, is cited on one of the many incompetent, as one of the many incompetent staff promoted or hired into senior, senior positions who does no actual work. Which is a fucking bonkers thing for Mark Kern of all people to complain about given his work history. Like, crazy that he would, that he would go there. Um... But yeah, also kind of bonkers that he would immediately go from saying, oh, this cancel pig is trying to get me canceled to just literally targeting people who, mind you, have nothing to do with him. People are just doing their jobs. They have no beef in this at all. Uh, here he is <laughs> sharing a thing from Yellow Flash. Cancel pigs attack Grums. They want him dead. 
Here we go. And here's another, uh, this is a recurring theme, you'll notice. IGN and Trash Reporters are desperate to revise history and claim they always loved Bayonetta and that Stellar Blade is such a horrible problem now. We see you. After gamers make Stellar Blade a hit, these people will claim they always loved Eve. They lie and lie. Uh, and this is from Ash Parrish, who you should all go follow. There's a subtle but important distinction between empowering sexuality a la Bayonetta and male gaze ass and titty sexuality. Which is true. Also, dang, what was uh, Bayonetta? What was the reviews like on Bayonetta? Oh, 90%. Oh, damn. So it was it was highly praised by critics. Oh, shit. That's crazy. Because I, I was just told, like, near Automata, it was, it was lambasted by critics. All these woke journos made, like, hated on Bayonetta. Uh, but no, this says, a beautiful and graceful fighting game that lets imagination uh, loose and winks before... Slapping Kratos, Dante, and every other hero back to the drawing board. Wow. Let me check out some of these critical reviews because these critics, these these game journalists, I've I've been told that they hated Bayonetta from from the get go. That they're going to give Stellar Blade bad scores like they did Bayonetta. Oh, features great retro game references, tons of unlockables, challenges, best game Sega's published in years, almost flawless exhibition of game gaming greatness. It's simply in a class by itself. Action masterpiece. We're still in the, the perfect scores, by the way. Stunning orgy of sadistic mayhem that surpassed even my unreasonably high expectations. Damn. New queen of stylish action games with inspired and flawless graphics and a beautiful and crazily irreverent main character. So, what would we call this thing that Mark keeps doing where he says, ah, these games were were hated when they came out because there's no proof to show that, that they were widely hated or reviled. When the general critic consensus, these journalists get together and say, man, these games fucking whip. When there are tons of people saying, yeah, this is almost like perfect. And the main character is awesome. See, what he's doing here is conflating the idea that because some critics, like Anita Sarkeesian, employed ideas about pop feminism to a fictional character, that they felt threatened by that. And over time have somehow internalized it as, ah, game journalists always hated Bayonetta. But this is just not, not the case. You can go read the reviews for yourself. Oh, so he here he basically admits to being part of Gamergate 2 as a harassment campaign. They are jealous. We have more traffic and eyeballs than they do. It's very interesting. Enjoy my block, journalist. You have no power here. Now, here here's actually a really good post from Ash because... Um, She's asking, hi, is it possible to ask you a question? Can you explain to me how I'm trying to rewrite history regarding Bayonetta? Because I've made it very clear in other tweets that I'm very much not. One more question. Can you please leave marginalized developers alone? Community manager for Compulsion Games have protected her account, but internet sleuths have found more of her openly racist tweets. Compulsion Games is working on South of Midnight's Sweet Baby Ain't Game and has taken no action and made no comment on this. I wonder why a tweet from three years ago saying... I was wondering why I had so many mayo in my mentions, and apparently he found my tweet. That's not racist. That's kind of funny. Sorry. Okay, and here we have another, where he just starts... This is, this is the point at which he just starts targeting random community managers for, quote-unquote, hating white men and Asians. Mind you. That's, that's a white guy. Uh, love to walk around loads of snotty looking rich twats and Asian tourists in 2019, five years ago. That's how, that's how deep back we're going. Imagine being a white man in this industry and just shutting the fuck up. God, could, imagine, could you imagine? Nothing quite like complaining about the fact that the spring water in your fridge hasn't reached optimal drinking temperature to remind you of your absurd white privilege. That's just true. You have a privilege to care about things that other people don't really have time or effort to care about. Yet to Grums, he hates white men because of it. Like, Mark Kern is the 
epitome of touch grass, find something real to care about. And he's turn, trying to turn it into a legitimate grift here. And this, this is where we see he like really fancies himself on some kind of crusade. If you want to help me change the gaming industry and like my recent expose about community managers and their secret discussion groups, please subscribe. Help change the gaming industry. I, Mark, how are you going to do that when nobody wants to work with you? When you are just digging yourself into a deeper hole and every major company is starting to block you. Here's another one. Another toxic community manager, Dirty F and Hippie, Elena Rupert, or Liana Rupert, um, formerly of Destiny 2 and current CM for the new Fallout on Prime, seems to have a very big problem with white people. Thanks to at G Gross Cuck 41 for captures. Company you keep. White men with white knight complexes sat around a table and thought, hmm, what's the way to profit off real trauma that's a very serious problem in this industry, especially in content creation? Liana is saying that's a bad thing, and that, that sounds like a bad thing. Fuck him and fuck all the people making excuses for him. Notice Mark doesn't go to effort to uh, give context for these. Like, who is he basically defending here? Oh, that's the whole thing he put all four into one picture. My exclusive story about the toxicity and racism among community managers has people trying to blackmiss me industry-wide. Now, as we'll show later, um, Liana got threatening and racist messages sent to her. As, as a community manager who was just doing her job before Mark decided to randomly target her. Now, the fact that he's being surprised that after randomly targeting people who have nothing to do with Sweet Baby, nothing to do with Stellar Blade or any of his other dumbass crusades, after that, he's he's surprised that they're trying to blacklist him. Can, can you believe it? Oh, geez, would you look at this? I wonder why he has such a vested interest in tweeting as much as he has um, when he has gained 34,000 followers in a month. Hmm, really, really working the good good deed. Here, here's a funny one, um, because he's trying to say Liana treats the word white like racists use the N-word. Replace the word white and read her tweets back to yourself very slowly. As a white game dev, why would you stand next to someone who hates you and all your customers? First off, Liana is white. Second, um, that's a that's a, a separate sentence, dude. That's a that's a different sentiment entirely at all. Like, if I were to say, hey, do you want me to throw you this sandwich? Replace the word sandwich with chainsaw. Kind of kind of change the implication outcome, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. It's it's the it's the John Mulaney bet, Fight Fi. It comes back to if you're comparing two words and won't say one of them, that's the worst word. Like it's straight up that. Like if you say white, but you're not gonna say the N-word, hmm. And, and here, again, we see, never forget they called you a pedo or incel for liking Nier Automata and Bayonetta. Who said this? Like, I, I noticed, you, you'll see they're, they're calling out Anita here. Anita wasn't really relevant much anymore when Nier Automata came out. Who was calling anybody a pedophile or an incel for liking Bayonetta. Like, uh, Vri cosplays, does this guy have a victim complex? He really does. He absolutely does. You can tell because he's constantly like, oh, these people are trying to cancel me. Well, he literally just targets people like Liana who are unrelated to his little crusade. And this brings us to Helldivers. Not Helldivers, new. God, he's so cringe. My take, she's been banning the right people in their Discord. Helldivers bans out of game political issues. If that policy is being applied fairly and the CM is doing her job, I'm fine with flags in bio. <laughs> Diversity is fine. Anti-male, anti-white racism and sexism is not. Nothing woke detected in Helldivers proper. Sure. 
uh, Mr. Mr. Pronouns himself coming in. When you are representing a company, all that shit should be off your profile. Grums, we didn't make everything political. They insisted. So I agree with you. So he just, he fucking just folds on the thing that he set up here because one of his little new fans is like, uh, well, everything political. Like, people shouldn't be able to express themselves freely at all if they work for a company. Like, are you, like, what? Um, Grums, I'm gonna have to revise my opinion. Helldivers community manager blocked me. Edited statement below. I wonder why, I wonder why people would block you. And as, as we're gonna, we're gonna find uh, up here, as we, we get into, you might be able to see me right there. I'm the, here, here's me. Um, he, he's not good at reading, really, I don't think. Uh, because he's saying, this is based on a quote tweet of somebody responding to me saying grums is now as evil as libs of tiktok and jk rowling i must have really triggered them which is funny because th that's not what i said uh i said quote from his perspective i've been harassing random community managers and getting them death threats why are community managers blocking me which is basically what he's saying and in my announcement for this stream, I said, tonight, we're going to look at the sad attempt at relevance that is Mark Kern, and then talk a bit about how JK Rowling and Libs of TikTok have intentionally conflated trans people with straight male predators and how it hurts everyone, which I did. Now, you'll notice a couple things there. I did not even use the word evil in either of those posts, um, and I did not compare him at all to Libs of TikTok or JK Rowling. So... Much like his assertions that, oh, people have always hated Bayonetta and people would call you a, a pedophile for saying Bayonetta is hot. Uh, this is just a bizarre lie. Like, it, it's an easily provable one. You can just go look at, like, literally, he's quote tweeting a picture of what I said. You can just look at that. It's just, it's just a weird lie. And it took this long, up until four hours ago, for him to say... As I've said before, and in almost every interview, YouTube interview I've had, don't harass anyone. Ask questions instead. Funny how journalists tweeting about me never say the same. They are not good people. So, not only is he still continuing to villainize people and say that they're, like, literally saying they're not good people. They're villains. They're the bad guys. Um, asking questions can still be harassment. If you are sending a thousand people at somebody who's just doing their job to ask questions that you don't directly have control over, you are enabling whatever harassment comes after. If you, if you want some good laughs, go into his comment sections because there there's some gold. Um, yeah, here he is again. Uh, the CM changed your profile to erase politics. Should have started this way. Keep politics out of games. Mind you, he only thinks that after... Uh, sweet baby heel versus baby face said said that basically like the dude doesn't have an original thought in his head he's just going along with this this movement line that is going to get him more support here's my position hell divers is a great game with no real life politics already you're wrong okay so like but here here's an interesting thing to, to consider first off you're wrong because satirically it is already made to reflect the military industrial complex and capitalist system that we have like you're you're wrong about that but moreover what does real life politics mean is that saying that there's no gay characters there's no queer characters there's not a character that's trans because at that point you're just saying okay well i don't want literally anything that is different than me like that's that's literally all it comes down to in the end is they just don't want anything that is different they just want to see themselves and only them represented be damned everybody else who plays these games Unless it's a, a skinny Asian chick with a fat ass, then of course, they're all for that. Uh, we can see the devs are doing it right. Community managers running a non-political Discord should refrain from being political and be as neutral as the game they represent. So again, you shouldn't have any opinions if you're if you're uh, on Discord. If you're if you're working for a company, you shouldn't have opinions on things. Oh, here we go. So. This is Liana Rupert, who we were talking about earlier. This is from her Twitter account. I, bl I blanked out the name, but 
It is. It has been found out because Liana shared it uh, from a contact form that she got recently. And there is there is an N word that isn't isn't censored on here. Now, mind you, while people who are are followers of Mark will say, "Well, there's no proof that he was associated with that." There was literally no spotlight on her aside. Sorry. <clears throat> There was no spotlight on her before this happened. Before he decided to start targeting random community managers for random games that have no association to Sweet Baby whatsoever. Who, by the way, also all happen to also be women or queer. Interesting. Interesting. And so this is this is the kind of thing that when you get targeted for harassment, this is the kind of harassment you get. And I've, I continually tried to bring this up to Mark, and I'm, I'm fascinated by what he might have said. People are creating fake harassment are too stupid to realize Gmail never lets you create names like this. Well, the problem... is that looks like an O. I honestly can't tell. I can't tell, but this is on a contact form, not on Gmail. Um, you can kind of leave any email on a contact form. Look at the N word further down, it's spelled with an O. Yeah, it very well because it's spelled with an I here. Yeah, it's like a contact form doesn't verify emails generally. So again, kind of a lie, buddy. To my knowledge, I'm I'm sure maybe there is a contact form out there who verifies emails. But in the past, when I've put in things through a contact form, it doesn't really. But, uh, so yeah, I, I didn't have, I've been spreading lies about him for weeks. I wonder what lies have I been spreading? Let me go, I'm gonna go try and find the other, t oh no, I can't. Here's, here's maybe one of the, the weirdest ones that Mark Kern has done. Um, Cause as he is thirsted over Eve's protagonist from Stellar Blade, here he is thirsting over this very young looking teenage, girl in a schoolgirl outfit so uh that's that's what he's into i guess as a 50 year old man that's what that's what he likes along with making jokes about oh she's just nervous she'll get over it as this is Jill bait at best, child at worst is a good way to put it. I've had I've had people um, tell me that her face has been digitally altered, and I can kind of see it now. Um, that she's been made to look even younger or more like a video game character, I guess. Um, but what I imagine it is is it's probably an adult girl who's been made to look even younger. But uh, yeah, Grums Grums is into that shit apparently. And I've been I've been lying about him for weeks though, and I've I've been uh, lying about him for weeks. It's interesting. I don't I don't think he was really on my shit list until like the last couple weeks when he wouldn't stop. Yeah, she's just a little nervous. It'll pass. Interesting. Now I'm curious. If you're asking, well, why would he be fighting so hard for this stuff? It's because the rest of the gaming industry doesn't want anything to do with him. He's a failure at every level. He was a bad manager. He was a bad boss. He made terrible financial decisions. He continuously rebooted the game. And so he has jumped on this. And and who can blame him? I mean, look at this. Followers gained weekly. The last 30 days, 34,000 followers. Put to rest any doubts that this is all a grift. That this is all just a last desperate attempt at a shred of relevance because that's really all it comes down to for this guy.
for him to lead his crusade to change the game industry by targeting and harassing game developers and community managers. That's 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 what he's about. 